invite Professor Shawqi Dallal and Dr. Nahla Khalifa to please take the stage to chair uh, the next session. I would also like to invite Professor Professor uh, Amr Sharif and Professor Zahar Irani to present their talk titled Water Governance and Technologies. Uh, this session will be particularly on water, energy, and environment. And I think these are very important topics. Uh, and I'm really very happy to, to see these topics presented in this conference. Yes, please, can start. Thank you, Professor, and thank you, everybody. Asalaamu Alaikum to everyone. So I'm going to be presenting um, some research that's being carried out by myself and Professor Zahir Irani and other colleagues uh, on a very important topic to this region, but also to other parts of the world. Uh, and this is around uh, food security, but also water and energy security as well. And we're very glad to see that the logo for this conference also contains a water droplet in it. So these are important topics, and uh, as you can see, this is part of research we're doing with colleagues from uh, the UK, Cranfield University, Brunel, University of Bradford, but also in Qatar as well, uh, Georgetown, and Australia, Western Sydney University. So uh, as part of this research, we just need to acknowledge the funder for this research was the Qatar Foundation uh, that we are doing the uh, project uh, on behalf of and funded by, which is known as the SafeQ project, as, as you can see there. So just to start with, food security and water and energy security is a growing concern across the world. And many organizations, as you can see from this, this uh, very small list, actually, are uh, concerned with looking at how food security, water security, and energy security can be maintained. But the important part about this slide is not just these logos, it's the GCC logos of universities and research organizations who are also concerned with water security as well. And we can see many of our uh, collaborating universities, friends and colleagues, including uh, Ahliya University as well, that are looking at this in terms of engineering, social, public health, and, and other issues as well. So although we can talk about global food security, global water and energy security, this is actually something very, very important to this region as well. When we consider all of these three aspects, we must consider something that we've heard something about early this, early today, which is a convergence of different challenges. Now, this is known as a nexus, and this is something that is called the food, energy, and water nexus, as you can see on this diagram. This, this comes from the nexus platform, the nexus network. And here we see the three global challenges which must be somehow balanced and brought together. <coughs> this ultimately talks about the interdependence between energy, food and water security in terms of the resources that are involved, including land, but also the impact it has upon populations and also in terms of uh, economic growth and consumption patterns, as you can see on the left. So when we talk about these three aspects, we actually are talking about all of the related impact factors as well. And this is the core aspect of our research, our interest in, in this field. Now, given we are in the Gulf and we're in Bahrain as well, uh, it is uh, sort of hardly surprising to, to note that this is a topic of heated debate and of interest in, in this part of the world. So over the last few years, if you've seen, you may have seen this talked about in various different, uh, various different uh, forums and in, in, in the media. Food security is something that's constantly within the line of sight of the public. It's in the media. You can see here some, uh, some of the media uh, pieces over the, the last few years, and I've just picked a few of them out. You probably can't see too many of them, but the words GCC, food security, and water security is regularly appearing. This is something that's not going to go away. And it's from 
different aspects, but across the different elements of the, the GCC as well, from Oman to Kuwait, Bahrain to Saudi, uh, all of the different countries within the GCC, this is a recurrent theme that is impacting citizens and nations and the economies. And of course, we cannot ignore water security as well. Water is required for food, water is required for energy and production of, of products and services as well. You can clearly see that this is, this is of very, very deep importance. In fact, when I was here in Bahrain a few months ago, this was an article in the, in the paper, I think it was in the Khalij Times that, that I saw, and I thought, well, this is actually an ongoing, an ongoing topic. And it's good to see that even in Bahrain, this is something which is regularly discussed and debated. Of course, it's so important now that even ex-presidents are talking about this. So literally a week ago, Barack Obama was in Milan talking about food security. And you can actually see his, his talk online as well as part of the Seeds and Chips conference. So this is something that is just not going to go away. It is a global challenge. It's a regional challenge. And uh, you know, even in the Oman news, you could see this in a, in a recent article, um, well, not recent, it was a few years ago, where they talked about these three different interconnecting areas, water, energy, and food security in the Gulf. So how do we solve this problem? Well, first of all, we need to understand the extent of it. What do we mean by food security, water, and energy security? And I just want to show you uh, output from a very useful tool that's available online which does some of this work for us that actually identifies where are these hotspots, where is there uh, acute or a meaningful challenge to food, water and energy security within the Gulf. I'm not going to show you all the detail here, but you can actually, using this uh, very useful online tool, zoom into different aspects of these three different areas. Now, if we just have a look at this, and just to be absolutely clear about this, there is no data for Bahrain and Qatar so far captured, which I think is, we think, is a useful area of research. This diagram shows in varying degrees of severity here, where green is, uh, green is good and red is increasingly severe, the level of food, water, and energy security in each of the three countries. Now, one of the aspects of uh, security studies in terms of food, water, and energy is availability. So, as you can see here, for these uh, GCC countries, the level of availability of food, water, and energy is actually very good. But how it's used and consumed is of concern. So, when we start looking at the combined indices, as you can see, at the top, it hasn't come through very good in color terms, we can start to see a difference. It's no longer green, it is becoming yellow. And that yellow will eventually become red. Why? Because we are dealing with resources, natural resources, which are going to be used, they're going to be depleted, and there needs to be a constant supply. So the issue and the challenge here is, how can GCC nations ensure the safety and security of food, water, and energy resources? You probably have them available here. The food, water, and energy can be combined together, but how can you secure and sustain those resources over time? And this is the big challenge. If we then look at some other data as well, we can start to see how does the GCC compare to other countries in the MENA and the Maghrib regions. And again, this is from a uh, report from uh, uh, AFED in 2014, which looks at renewable water resources and arable land area. So you can, you can easily see here, uh, there are a few hotspots in the GCC, and some of those yellow or green aspects of uh, food, water, and energy security are slowly turning pink, maybe even going to red. So this is a challenge. How do we solve this challenge? What do we do with this? Let me just tell you briefly to end to conclude some of the work we're doing with colleagues supported by our Qatar Foundation project. And uh, some of the colleagues are shown here. We're looking in, at the moment in, uh, with respect to this particular case of Qatar and the state of Qatar's use of uh, food and how food is consumed and indeed how food is uh, even wasted or lost. 
I won't go through some of the technical details here, but from our research, we have found some key driving factors which we've analyzed using a systems-based approach. How can we sustain the use of food, the use of water, the use of energy? Uh, and what we found is that there's a whole range of reasons why food may be being lost or wasted in, in that GCC country, which is of course not too far from here. And some of these factors you can see in the yellow box here, food market competition, regulations, market access, bureaucracy, all of these factors are impinging upon food consumption and food waste. These are not the normal factors that you may consider or may assume impact uh, and impact food waste, but this is what we found so far from our research. We've also found here, and I won't uh, bore you with the detail here, but you might be able to see a whole host of interrelating factors. Human behavior also drives food security. So, so I'm just about to end as well. Um, the factors which drive that also relate to socioeconomic status. We were talking earlier on today about uh, how status and you know, showcasing particular projects and initiatives is very important in the GCC region. And we have to be aware of the cultural sensitivities about how people consume and work, uh, and how communities work together as well in this part of the world. So just to conclude with that, uh, that diagram, this is ongoing research. We don't necessarily have answers. Uh, in fact, we have more questions. So when we are talking about food security in the environment and sustainability, in the Gulf region, we need to be aware of the wider and interconnected context of our natural resource systems. So thank you for that and uh, happy to take questions now or later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Amir. Now open the time for a question. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sharif. It's an interesting kind of, let's say, a project that you have, but this project is really not something new. If you look at the literature from international institutions over the past hundred years, they have been talking about water and energy and food. And until today, we have not been able basically to find solution to these kind of problems. And when you look at the Middle East in particular, and this is the research that you people are undertaking, I think everything boils down to management of resources in the region itself. Now, you mentioned, for example, economic growth. There are so many studies have been shown that there is a negative relationship between consumptions of energy and other resources and economic growth. So even economic growth needs to be managed. You look at the population in this part of the world, in particular in the Arab world, you know, the rate of growth of population is the highest among all regions in the world. And nobody is doing basically anything about it. And even if you look at the water resources, and you can clearly see there's not really much of a public awareness among even the average person as of how to consume water, how to manage water, and how to use these kind of resources. So there are some element of culture, element of social, element of political institution. So it's a very complex kind of process that you need really to go through in order to be able to at least come to a clear conclusion for this. Thank you. Thank you. And I think just to highlight that, you know, going back to this diagram and the previous ones, <clears throat> what you've highlighted is exactly the source of our research interest. You know, um, if we're thinking about economic growth, the, the models of food production from the 1970s, 1960s, post-World War II era no longer apply. You, we can produce more food, to solve the you know, world hunger problem, but actually that won't solve the problem. So you're quite right, the research has shown now that increasing food production, increasing resource production doesn't actually solve this problem. We have to go back to what this diagram tries to show, which is there are so many more behavioral aspects which we have to address. We have to address the culture. We have to address the societal and the community uh, drivers, and we need to go to that level, including education as well. And so conferences like this and forums like this are really very, very important, where we can all come together and share different insights. And I think that's 
uh, one, one aspect which really links to this idea of sustainable development. Development is only sustainable when you bring different non-technical aspects together, non-economic aspects together. So thank you for the question. Okay, so, I think you. the topic is very interesting, so we can have only two questions more. It's okay for that. I wonder if you are taking consideration the water taking from uh, the sea. Okay, can you introduce yourself, please? Present yourself. Uh, I wonder if you are taking consideration <laughs> the water. Are, introduce yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. 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 If you could introduce yourself. Dr. Abdel Qadir, I am a professor of law and okay. a lawyer. Okay. Uh, I wonder if you have taken consideration the water taken from sea, desalinated water in the Gulf here. This is number one. Number two, uh, I think uh, it is not a matter of the scarcity of water. It is how we are using water in the Gulf countries. Uh, even in Quran, our Prophet Muhammad is advising us to be very, very, very strict in using the water even while you are taking ablution for prayers. But people are misusing water. For cleaning a car, they spend three, four barrels for each car. So we need, we need a kind of law or we need kind of uh, how, how to, how to uh, enable people to uh, mis, uh, use the water in a proper way. So as at least Sorry? to save the scarcity. Thank you. Yes. Okay, one more question, please. I'll start my question uh, telling a little story about, uh, uh, yeah, Professor Saad Darwish, uh, advisor to the president of Applied Science University. Uh, one incident had a clip on, on, on Twitter and, and Facebook was about a lorry uh, dropping all the stuff in the central market in Bahrain. And the next day, the, His Highness, the Prime Minister, put this in the agenda of the, uh, of the meeting for the, for the cabinet. Uh, about uh, preserving this grace, uh, preserving uh, the grace that God has given us. So the problem is with the, uh, I think, is to uh, change the attitude of the people, their ways of consumption and, and their behavior, as you said. It is very important. Thank you so much for raising these points. Thank you. Thank you. I think those are two very, very good points, just to uh, bring both of those points together. Uh, our research is not necessarily looking at the water aspect. It will do, inshallah, in the future, and that's our, our next step is to look at that. Our primary concern is around the food, but you cannot get away from the food and the energy and the, the waste aspects when you look at food security. So one of the things that we've been discussing with farms in Qatar and other countries, even in, in Saudi, not too far from here as well, is how is, food, uh, so how is water used in food production? And water is also wasted, and you also mentioned this, this point as well. You know, we, we, uh, we, we tend to use water and energy to create other products, but we don't see how that water and energy is embodied in that product. So, for example, these things right here have all taken energy, have all taken water. We just don't see them. So our interest is how do we convince people who make products, who use them, who maybe even abuse them, how do we change their mind? And this is part of it. So we're looking at the whole, we're trying to look at the whole system, which may be more complicated, but it helps to increase the debate. And I'm happy to hear you are keen to engage in that debate as well. So thank you for your questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Professor Sharif. Just one last comment, please. Regarding the data about water in Bahrain, there is a very interesting article written by one of our colleagues in AGU. And in this, uh, in this paper you can find, uh, it is very good source of, of uh, information about water in Bahrain, just between the brackets. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, if anybody has uh, any, any um, ideas of how to collaborate with, with us on research in Bahrain, we'd be very, very happy to hear. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we would like to invite uh, Professor Mansour Al Ali and Professor Alam to give certificates of appreciation to our keynote speaker. Professor uh, Amir, 